Hey, GED students, I had a student email me at lightandsaltlearning at gmail.com. That was Pamela, and she had this tricky quadratic equation for me to solve. And I made a whole other video. I was in the middle of editing it, and then I thought I'd try something on the calculator, and I found an easier way <laughs> than I've been doing it. So I'm super excited to show you how we can use this calculator to take a few shortcuts on our GED. So let's take a look. First of all, how do I even know this is a quadratic equation? Because if you don't recognize it as a quadratic equation, you won't know what to do. So let me show you. First thing, how do I know it's an equation? So this is an equation uh, because it is one expression equivalent or equal to another expression. That's how I know it's an equation and that's how I'm able to solve it. Even if the directions didn't say solve, I know I can solve equations, but how do I know that it's a quadratic? Well, the clue here that it's a quadratic is really the y squared term. Now, if it was just a y squared, I could use some other methods, but I have both a y squared and a y term. And that means no matter how much you tried to isolate y, get y by itself, all your methods would fail you. So you need more skills, more skills when it comes to quadratics, because you won't be able to isolate the letter. And so there's a lot of different ways to solve quadratics, but the way I usually teach my students so that we just have one method is what we call the quadratic formula. Now, good news, the quadratic formula is on the GED formula sheet. If you've never seen the GED formula sheet or you don't have a copy, you should go ahead and Google it. You should print it out. You want that at your side as you're working on your GED. You'll have it when you test. But you look at that formula sheet and then it says that the quadratic formula is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, there's a couple things you might be wondering about here. First of all, you might be thinking, Kate, what the heck is this x about? Well, the quadratic equation, we're just assuming your letter is x because very frequently we use the letter x, but obviously there was no x in my equation, there was a y. So in this case, I'm not really using it to solve for x, I'm using it to solve for y. So if that confuses you, you just go ahead, change this x here to a y. That's what I'm using it for right now. So what does this say? It says to find y, to find out what y is, to solve for y, do all this junk over here on the right-hand side with a, b, and c. Now, of course, the question remains, well, what are a, b, and c? How am I going to do this if I don't know what they are? So a, b, and c are the coefficients of the term if the equation is set equal to zero. Let me say that again. If the equation is set equal to zero. So you have got to make sure that your quadratic equation equals zero before this formula will work. So mine does equal zero, I'm good to go. That means I can see A, B, and C, and I'll show you where you can see them. So let's start with A. A is the coefficient of the square term. So there's my square term, see it with a Y squared there. The coefficient is the number out front. The number out front of my squared term is 20. That's the coefficient, so that's my A. Your B is the number that's out front of the variable all by itself. So not the squared, but like the plain old Y or the plain old X. So here's the plain old Y. So the coefficient or the number out front of that is negative 31. Be sure you scoop up that negative sign. I know it's we technically read it as a minus sign, but that means that the coefficient is negative 31. And what's my C? My C is the constant, the plain old number, the one that doesn't have a letter with it. So in this case, negative seven is my C. All right, so now I know my A, my B, and my C. And here's the cool thing I learned in my TI. The biggest mistake that most students do when doing this part of algebra where you substitute in values is that they don't know when they should use parentheses, they don't know when they should use uh, minus signs, and it really messes them up. So you can actually avoid that with the, our lovely calculator. So you can program in values for A, B, and C. Let me show you what I mean. So first I'm gonna program in uh, 20 for A. The way you do that is you just type in the number 20. You press the STO button, that stands for store. We're gonna store 20 and we wanna store it as the A value. So I'm gonna come right above the store button and I'm gonna press this variable button. See how it, how it has different letters on it? Well, depending on the number of times you hit it, that'll be the letter you're storing. So I'm gonna keep hitting it until mine says A and then I'm gonna press enter. I've just stored 20 as my A. 
And let's continue that way. I wanna store negative 31 as my B. Make sure you use the negative down here by enter. Negative 31, I'm gonna press store, and I'm gonna store that one as my B. B, good, enter. Negative seven is gonna be stored as my C, enter. Ha, I stored those values for A, B, and C. All you have to do now is type in the right-hand side of my expression. Now, careful, you're not gonna type Y equals. You're just gonna type this, the right-hand side. That's the part I'm evaluating. So here you go. Now to do that, the first thing you should do is get me a fraction bar. You see how that fraction bar is nice and long and stretches out under the entire expression up there? That means I need to start with my fraction bar. And we're gonna type negative B. So make sure you get down to the bottom here and you use the negative key next to enter. And again, we're gonna use this variable button to get to B, negative B. Now, here's the weird thing. The next symbol says plus or minus. Guys, we do not have a plus or minus button on your calculator. So you guys throw up your hands in despair. What should I do? What can I do? Well, you just do one at a time. First, we'll do it with a plus, then we'll do it with a minus. Quadratic equations give you two answers, okay? So negative B plus, and now I need a square root. Square roots in green, halfway down on the left here. So anytime you want something in green, you have to hit the green second button. So I hit second, and then I can hit that X squared key to get my square root. Now again, I need B, so I'm gonna put in B, and I need to square it. So right above B is the X squared key. Minus, this one I have to hit minus because it's between two numbers, it's not out front. And then four, and now I need the letter A, now careful, if you now try to hit this for C, it's gonna change your first one, okay? So let me get back to A. You need to press the right arrow and then you can use this button again to get C. Now I'm gonna arrow down and put that all over to A. Sweet, press enter for me and look at that. First answer is seven fourths, woohoo. I just saved myself a lot of time. Okay, now next thing to do is to do the minus. Don't forget there's two answers. There's one when we add and one when we subtract. That's what that plus minus sign means. So I'm so lazy, I don't wanna type this whole thing in. And I know y'all, you're mathematicians out there, you're lazy too. So watch this neat little trick. I'm gonna use this arrow key up at the top here and I'm gonna arrow back up over my expression and I'm gonna press enter and it'll rewrite it on my screen. And then all I have to do is arrow over to turn that plus sign up there into a minus. So I arrow until I'm blinking on the plus sign and I'm just going to hit the minus instead and press enter. And look at that, there's my second answer, negative one fifth. And I did that in about a third of the time as my last video when I simplified it all by hand. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I will do my best to answer it.